another play with the Q Multiply crystal set. Previously I was using an amplified speaker filter, the one you see here. That was great for amplifying a QRP rig which could already drive a pair of headphones, but it had a little bit too little gain for the crystal set. With the crystal set you do want a one transistor low noise audio amplifier first. Here's the inside of the Q Multiply crystal set, the same circuitry as in the previous video, except for the extra transistor audio amplifier. It's so simple, I'll just describe the circuit. The audio coming from the diode goes into an electrolytic capacitor. You can use about 4.7 microfarad, though it can be anywhere from 1 to around 10. That goes to the base of the NPN transistor which I used a BC548, like what I used in the Q Multiply, but it could be a common one like the 2N3904, 2N222, etc. Anyway, from the base, you wire a 220K resistor from there to the collector. And from the collector to the supply rail is a resistor, value not critical, but this looks like 4.7K. You could use anything between, say, 2.2 and 10k. That goes to the positive supply rail, and that is fed with 9 volts. Now, to take the audio output, the electrolytic capacitor you see here, that can be something like 1 to 10 microfarad. The positive of that goes onto the collector of the audio amplifier and then the free end to the headphone or audio output connection. I haven't mentioned the emitter of the audio amplifier, that just goes straight to earth. So it's very simple, just a handful of components, an NPN transistor, 220k resistor, 4.7k resistor, and two, and two electrolytics between 1 and 10 microfarad. That's a simple audio amplifier, but it works well and it drives the headphones. So you can hear a lot more stations than with just the crystal set and the Q multiplier. But anyway, what we'll do for this video, we'll demonstrate what benefits that provides. I'll just connect an antenna. We won't bother with the earth, although if I was to add it, the voltage, although if I was to add it, there would be even more gain. But as you'll hear, the gain we've got is more than sufficient. And I'm again using this Mushroom Amplified Speaker. It's about 9 o'clock at night, so we should be able to hear quite a few broadcast signals, including possibly those from interstate. As you can hear, those two signals are quite close together. My arguments and spend a lot of time in my head, as you can imagine. Go back to the other setting. Those stations you heard there were interstate stations. Walk and to try and find my way in the dark. But don't you think those logics of the possessive logic and the, what you call the extractive logic, they are at the very heart. That's of one of their local stations, 621 the ABC. We call At this point, it's not oscillating. Absolutely. I mean, it's quite broad. You can't hear much either side. Okay. Right. Um, the whole construction of national identity is built on on the possessive logics at play. And what do I mean by Advancing that? Advancing this, it gets narrower. Studios. And when I 
I look out, what can I see? I can see a concrete jungle that, that humans have built. And I see that as symbols that show to the, real, the world and to us as Indigenous peoples that this land is actually occupied and taken and possessed by others. Just in looking at the I notice it's quite narrow, no, but it's not quite that. oscillating yet. The monuments that exist in the parks, the names of the parks, right. fundamentally, <laughs> yeah, you know, things are, these are the things that, that are built, that are acquired, that are possessed. And they are supposedly a things that somehow are testimony to us as humans. This is supposed to be the epitome. We are this, we are this civilization. You know, this is the epitome of what it is to be human. So look at it. Mm. You know, and it's weak. Really, when you think about it in those terms, those now we've advanced it a bit more, street, but this particular and the audio changed, mm -hmm. and they're all figments of the imagination. But they like name because when you name, you impose your will on the thing, and you take it into possession. Right? It's like it's why I sort of also don't want. You know, I, I won't write about Indigenous identity. You won't hear me talk about Aboriginal identity. I will talk about sovereignty. I will talk about ontology, epistemology and axiology. But I won't talk about identity. There's a whole heap You'll of, notice you know, that's when it's oscillating. Around. It's but better it's fidelity. Because identity itself comes out of the Enlightenment. It comes out of a possessive logic, you know. So identity is not just about... And it implies... <laughs> An interstate station. One thing I should point out is this was built as a crystal set. It wasn't intended that I'd add the Q multiplier. And with these leads, they were intended to vary the inductance, but they also provide some hand capacity, which is not ideal when you've got such a selective receiver like this, especially with an oscillating Q multiplier. Now these stations before could be heard as carriers in the headphones, but were too weak to receive. Now they are audible. Now it's interesting to hear the change in audio characteristics tuning across the station. This is with the Q multiplier just before oscillation. That's in the middle. Sunny's on the phone. Hello, Sunny. Yeah, hi there, guys. How are you? Good, Sunny. How are you, mate? Uh, good, mate. Um, I'm, I'm a, uh, in the market to buy a car. I'm jumping between I-30 and uh, Horton Cruiser 1.6 Yeah, it's slightly oscillating. I'm getting told that go for a, a higher mile. I'm going to go 
rivalry between these two. Now, can you guys please help me out? Sorry, um... Now this station here is 693, which is 3AW, and I think moving further up, I think this is 702, which from memory is ABC in Sydney. And as you can hear, the two stations can easily be separated. Although I should point out that although it is a Melbourne station, uh, 3AW693 doesn't actually propagate all that well down here. I think they may use a directional antenna. It's considerably weaker than all the other local Melbourne AM stations here. Area there, but I can't hear much. Hey, David Feeney's future in the shadow ministry is in doubt after opposition leader Bill Shorten declined to endorse him. From memory, I think this is 729, which is ABC Adelaide, and that makes sense because it's 9.30pm our time, and they are half an hour behind, so that would be their 9pm news. Adelaide is about 600 or so kilometres from here. This I think is 738. This is uh, another strong local station, 774, ABC in Melbourne. Uh, one thing about this, medicine, and these days it's a with the much higher signal level, selectivity appears to be much less, and it's actually a bit better to drop the volume down.
very low down you can hear the fading ah. moving my thumb makes a huge difference When you tune around the AM band, if you hear a weak station, don't just tune past to find a stronger one. Keep listening for a while. With any luck, it will get stronger and you'll be able to uh, ID it. Or at least hear some commercials that might give you a clue as to where it's located. Definitely better when it's lightly oscillating. This streaming control has a vernier drive, definitely essential. It's called eliminated τους σπόρους, κάλλιστα, τους βάζετε σε ένα πιατάκι. Again, five millimeters makes a huge difference. Obviously a South Australian station.
Looking from the second placing and third is Zanorma. Into fourth placing, Taka High George around the outside of... <laughs> Sounds like there's two stations on this frequency. You're crucial to your remaining in government. Your majority is so narrow, it's going to take one death, one scandal for everybody's hands to be up in the air. And we've seen your party is just as prepared to deny the leader who becomes unpopular as anybody else. You have the attitudes for uh, all over the media. You know, many people have made the call to get Tony back onto the front bench. Erica Betts, so out of board in misery. You're the weakest government. <laughs> That could, but it's in a way, John, Bill Shorten is the winner of the election because he gets to sit back and watch you all tear one another apart. I think the winner of the election the winner gets of the the election. Election. The winner of the 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 election. The winner of his friend Tony Abbott and so on election night he had an opinion I happened to be at the end of that opinion and I heard what he said he then went on and did it on television now Andrew's quite within his rights to support Tony Abbott but that's his that's his opinion he believes Tony Abbott would be a better leader of the Liberal Party now what's happened is we've had an election with a new leader Malcolm Turnbull who's dropped this mob over the line they're in the <coughs> they've got more seats than what Labor did <coughs> country. Now, I have cautioned Andrew, who is a dear friend of mine, that he should shut up and forget about Tony Abbott coming back and let Malcolm Turnbull get on with doing the job he's doing. Well, and thanks for the question of mentioning me. I have never said that Tur Malcolm Turnbull should be thrown out of the job he was elected to do, so don't, fight, don't verbal me. You're obviously hard of hearing and I suspect you probably don't listen. Let's, let's, go, let's, go, Steve, anyway. let's go back to our question. So he has his hand up. Just a fir the first point on that, I never said your name, I said your friend Andrew Bolt, I never um, you mentioned the in that. concert with Andrew as having some conspiracy. <laughs> Thank you. 
seems to be a bit of hissiness here. One dollars and seven cents. That's Shepparton, they're paying race eight, four, one and three. Angle Park, race ten, two. Just uh, reduce the internet coupling a bit. Of course, they're reaching out here. Number. And we've got a real good number out. Right? Oh, what? The Cook Islands. The Cook Islands? Yeah, Michael Hunt. Wow. That's, See, that's, that's, not that's bad quality. Yeah. Um, <laughs> other book. Stephen Kernahan. Do you know yeah. where he's. Oh. Turn it the Should point out this is loosely coupled. This is what happens when you tighten it. There's a 
strong station very close by, so um, we'll couple it very loosely. This is where loose coupling and a stronger audio amplifier can help pick up some of the weaker signals. If you do start to notice hand capacity, that's an indication that you've got a good receiver. At least one that is picking up weaker signals or is higher Q, but not necessarily one that's built properly. Like with a earthed metal front panel, unlike the chopping board I'm using now. <laughs> Now notice it was strong and a bit distorted, so I've just turned the Q multiplier up a bit. past that strong station and I find that there are spots of the Q multiplier that signal drops a little bit. So that could be helpful. Sister was that he cried out from the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In the Old Testament we read more about this and says why are you so far away from helping me? And from my words of my groaning, oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you are not here.
told here by buying farms and houses and taking a long-term lease on Darwin Harbour, they're also attempting to control freedom of our local Chinese press by saying that if adverse comment is made of China's government, then advertisers are made to withdraw under threat that those with business interest in China will be affected. That's 1269, 2SM from Sydney. Actually, I don't think it is because that very strong station that we heard before was 1377. So I think it's a repeat of that from somewhere else. This is 3KND on 1503. Getting to the northeast, number one Polaris dealer for over 17 years. But now motorcycles and power equipment. And remember, nothing rides like a Polaris. I think that's 3NE, 1566. This is the top of the dial. We'll just try um, see what happens if, we'll, if we can get any higher frequencies. Possibly around 160 meters or 1.8 megahertz. Nothing heard. We'll keep keep going down. Um, what if we were to here? Ah. 
Well, I think this is the ABC from the Northern Territory, around 2.3 to 2.4 megahertz. position. Now we'll see if we can go a bit higher. both stations, there are two stations up around here. This covers up to 80 meters. Lighting on around 3.5 megahertz. There's some SSB there. As you can hear, the hand capacity is terrible.
Well, that was VK5 SFA using a homebrew magnetic loop from near Adelaide, about 600 kilometres from here. Being heard on this crystal set with a Q multiplier, and all the other stages are just audio amplification. I'll just see if the signals are detectable with these headphones. And they are detectable on the verge of readability. If they were CW signals, I would be able to make something out of them. If I had optimised antenna coupling, then they might be readable on SSB as well. Oh, there's some Morse. That's the VK2WI beacon at Jewel near Sydney. It's on 3699. So that's our test of the Q Multiply crystal set with a bit more audio amplification and some changes to the coil tapping points not only does it receive the medium wave broadcast band but also covers the tropical short wave bands around 2 megahertz, 2.5 megahertz and even 80 meter SSB amateur activity could be heard. Reception wasn't all that good because of the hand capacitance but if I had a proper metal front panel and some isolation then it would have been fine.